All right, we've got some news from the Canadian housing market this morning. Another quiet month as national home sales are down. According to the Canadian Real Estate Association, May was kind of uneventful. Uh, I want to turn now to David McDonald. He's a senior economist at the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. With more, good morning to you, David. So we've got some soft numbers for May. Typically, the summer months are, and the spring actually, is when we see the biggest boom in, in sales. But what do you make of the housing numbers coming in this morning? Well, certainly folks are going to be looking at the interest rate and the fact that it came down uh, just last week, although by a fairly small amount. Uh, certainly there was some concern that if interest rates fell, we would just see house prices explode again. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case, at least with this particular data point. Part of the reason, of course, is that uh, many Canadians have yet to even renew at these higher rates. June is that midway point where half of Canadians will have had to renew at the higher rates, but half hadn't. Uh, and uh, just because they've got a, a fixed term and that term isn't up yet. And so we're moving past that halfway point. And so even if households are renewing uh, at 4.75 instead of 5, that is slightly cheaper. But they're almost certainly renewing at well more than uh, they started at uh, when they started their term. And so this appears to, you know, continuing to keep a lid on, on volumes, keeping them very low. Uh, and likely continuing to put some pressure on house prices as opposed to driving them up. They seem to be, you know, relatively stable. What about housing starts? How will the Bank of Canada's rate cut impact starts, do you think, and when? So there's new data out, actually out from Statistics Canada this morning looking at housing investment, broadly speaking. It is down slightly from last month. This is the April data compared to the March data. Um, what's interesting in that is the residential housing side. What's underappreciated, I think, is the big increase in interest rates not only socks it to mortgage holders, but it has a big impact on new construction of residential houses in general. This is one of the key ways, actually, that interest rates affect the economy is that it drives down residential investment. Uh, in this past month, we've seen a decline, particularly in single-family home residential investment, down 5% since March. But this is part of a long trend that started with the increase in interest rates in February of 2022. Uh, new single family home investments down 33% or 36% rather uh, from when the rate hike started. That's actually well below where we were at in the middle of the pandemic when sections of the industry were closed down at a time when governments and, 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 and homeowners are crying for more housing. We're building less as a result of high interest rates. If we take a look at the apartment construction side, that's relatively similar to where it was when the rate hike started. In large part, though, that's because governments are backstopping new apartment builds through things like tax preferences, subsidized loan programs, uh, federally as well as in some of the provinces. And that's likely what's making it such that apartment, new, new residential apartment uh, investment is not down. It's not up, but at least it's not down in the same way that we've seen on single family homes. How long do you think people are going to stay on the sidelines? I mean, what kind of decrease does there have to be, David? Well, clearly it's more than a quarter of a yeah. point. Um, you know, <laughs> In reality, folks who started, uh, you know, who, who are now renewing their mortgages, um, they were facing an overnight rate of 0.25, 0.5%. Now the overnight rate is 4.75. So you could imagine if if the rate went down by a full point, say we we're at 3.75, it's still a lot more expensive than it was four or five years ago to carry a mortgage. And so therefore, this big increase that folks are concerned about in terms of house prices, just doesn't seem as likely as it might have been. We might see volumes increase. Um, that's one of the areas where, we, you know, the prices haven't budged that much, but volumes are, are way down compared to where they were pre-pandemic. Um, but, you know, even with these really high, this really rapid increase in interest rates, we didn't really see house prices go down that much. They went down about 15% since peak, uh, you know, a bit more or less, depending on which city you're looking at. Um, but it's not clear to me that the prices are going to go way up just because uh, the interest rates come down, even if they came down by a fair amount. David, good to see you this morning.